You probably know that if you take white light and pass it through a prism, that you can separate it into the colors that make it up. Everything from red to blue. Some people like to remember the order of the colors as Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Going from longer wavelengths to shorter wavelengths, lower energies of light to higher energies of light. We call this a spectrum, and this is just one way to look at it. This is a photographic spectrum, but we can look at it more quantitatively. Let me describe to you how an astronomer does this. So if we take light from a star and pass it through a prism, or in the case of an astronomer, use an instrument called a spectrograph, we can spread the light out into the different colors, but if we want to look at them individually and count, photons or see how intense a particular color of light is, we can use a filter before we collect it onto our digital detector. And so in this example, we're starting with blue, and we let the blue light through. We only count the blue photons. We do this using a blue filter. And so let's say that in 60 seconds I count 81 blue photons. Then I switch my filter to a green filter so that now I'm only going to detect the green photons. I count for 60 seconds and I measure 85 photons. And then I switch over to a yellow filter and count 83 photons in one minute. Then I switch over to an orange filter and I count 78 photons in one minute. Finally, I use a red filter and count 70 photons. I've noted all this down in a table and so that I can see that different colors give me different numbers of photons from this particular star. I construct what's called a uh, black body curve or spectral curve uh, for this. It looks like this. It is, an, it is a graph of intensity or number of photons on the y-axis versus the wavelength of the light on the x-axis. We call this a black body curve and it tells us about how much energy we're getting at different wavelengths of light. The peak of the curve is related to the object's temperature. How is it related? Well, the peak above the wavelength axis tells you how hot or cool an object is at its surface. The hotter an object is, the shorter the wavelength of that peak will be. Also, the peak tells you about the color of an object. And I mentioned in a previous lecture that hot objects are bluer and red objects are cooler. And we know this from examining objects in physics. Hotter objects tend to give off more of their light at shorter wavelengths, and cooler objects tend to give off more of their light at longer wavelengths or redder wavelengths. This is reflected in a spectral curve. The mathematical relationship between the wavelength of the peak of a spectral curve and the temperature at the surface of an object is called Wien's Law. And it goes like this. Wavelength of the peak is inversely proportional to the temperature. So one over the temperature. The bigger the temperature, or the higher or hotter an object is, the shorter the wavelength of the peak will be. That is, the further to the left on a spectral curve the peak will be above the x-axis. Also, hotter objects also give off more photons, and so the peak will be higher up for hotter objects. But also keep in mind that size also influences the number of photons. We'll deal with that a little bit in the lecture right now. Keep in mind that everything that has a temperature is going to emit some type of radiative energy, and so even humans give off a type of light and a spectrum of light. Although humans have a body temperature which is quite low compared to things that are in space, humans emit most of their radiative energy in the infrared part of the spectrum. And so if you used a spectrograph on a person, you wouldn't see anything in the visible portion, but if you had the ability to see the infrared part of the spectrum, that's where the peak wavelength, or wavelength of the peak, for a human would be. So here's a black body curve. It corresponds to the spectral curve for the sun. And the question we can ask first is, what is the wavelength of the peak of this black body curve? 
The wavelength is on the x-axis, and so if we look at the peak of the curve, it looks like it's somewhere in the middle of the visible light spectrum. That's somewhere about 450 to 500 nanometers in wavelength. Another question we can ask is, what color is the sun overall? A lot of people will say yellow, but if you looked up at the sun in the sky, not directly, but if you looked up at the sun when it's high in the sky on a clear day, you'd notice that the sun is white. And the reason for this is, is that the sun gives off most of its light in the visible part of the spectrum, and the way that the spectrum of the sun works is, there's not a lot of difference from one color to the next in the total intensity or energy output at those colors. There's a small variation, but not enough for the human eye to detect. And so our sun appears white because it's basically giving off nearly equal amounts of energy in the different visible colors. There's a bigger change in the amount of energy that the sun gives off in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, that's over on the left part of the spectral curve, and in the infrared part of the spectrum. So what if our sun had different temperatures? What if the sun was hotter at its surface? In that case, the wavelength of the peak would be at a shorter wavelength, and so it would have to go to the left. What if the sun was cooler in temperature? In that case, the wavelength of the peak would be longer, and so the uh, peak would be above somewhere on the right part of the x-axis. So here we've got three different spectral curves, A, B, and C, and we can ask a few questions about them, and this will help prepare you for the lecture tutorial called Black Body Radiation. The first question we can ask ourselves is, which object gives off the greatest amount of blue light? To figure this out, we go to the blue part of the spectrum, and then we look at which curve is most intense at that color. Well, C has the least amount of intensity, and A has the most, and so A is definitely giving off the greatest amount of blue light. And then the next question we're asking is, which object gives off the greatest amount of red light? Well, if we go to the red part of the spectrum and also look at the intensities of the light given off in each of these curves, A also has the most amount of intensity or the greatest amount of red light. But a follow-up question would be, which one actually appears red to us? Which one of these spectral curves corresponds to an object that would appear red to the human eye? Well, in that case, it wouldn't be A. It would be the object that's giving off more red light than any other color. And in that case, we would have to look at object C. It's more intense at red than it is at the blue or violet part of its spectrum. Finally, which object would have the lowest temperature? Remember, Wien's law says that the peak wavelength, or wavelength of the peak of the spectral curve, is inversely proportional to the temperature. So, the bigger or hotter the temperature, the shorter the wavelength of the peak. A has, the, has a peak at the shortest wavelength, which means A is definitely the hottest, and then B, and then finally C. C has the longest wavelength of the peak, which means it's at the lowest temperature. We could also compare the sizes of these objects if we knew other things about them. So for example, if you recall from our, from our discussion of luminosity, two objects that have the same temperature but uh, are different in size will have different ener total energy outputs or luminosity. And so what if an object had the same temperature as C but was larger than object C? Well, it's wavelength of the peak would be at the same place. However, because it's larger, it would give off more photons in total, and so the peak would be higher up. Keep that in mind. Anytime an object has the same wavelength of the peak as another object, that means they are at the same temperature.